Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be using our Cybertruck and the SLAM toolbox in ROS to create a map of our environment by driving the robot around. So I'll be working off of my previous video, the ROS2 wheeled mobile robot gazebo simulation ROS2 control diff drive controller, where I set up the uh, file for the Cybertruck as well as the controller, so that's a prerequisite for this video. But in this video, what I'll be going over is these topics here. So We'll be talking about what is SLAM, how to install the SLAM toolbox, how to set up Gazebo World, how to run SLAM toolbox and set up the parameters, how to set up Arvis settings, how to run the Arvis from the config file, how to handle this special error that you might be seeing called no map received, and how to create the map with SLAM toolbox, how to save the map, and finally how to load the map. All right, so what is SLAM? SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. So that's the acronym for SLAM. And the main question that we want to answer is, where am I? So to figure this out, you could break it up into two parts. First, we want to find the map of the environment. That's the mapping part. And the second part is location of the robot relative to the map. So that is considered localization. So with simultaneous localization and mapping, we're actually doing both of these things at the same time. So there are three main frames that we want to consider in ROS when we're dealing with SLAM. And the first one we want to look at is ODOM. So with the ODOM frame, it is a fixed frame of the robot starting location. And the main properties of that is that it's continuous and smooth. But one of the main issues is that it can drift. So drifting means it might go somewhere over time and it's not any longer accurate, no longer accurate, OK? And then here we have the map. Map is a fixed frame of the robot's starting location, and it's the map's origin. So some properties of that is it's discrete. But the thing is, is that it's relatively accurate. So that's why we want to rely on this map. And the base is the location of the robot. So in the perfect world, we can map the environment using our odometry, which is our wheel encoder, and our LiDAR point cloud. So as the robot moves, we'll collect the point cloud. And the odom and map frames would be coincident. So if we look at this image here, this is a perfect scenario. Okay, So if you imagine the robot is moving around, so here it moves to like position 1, and it gathers this uh, point cloud data. It moves to position 2, and then it gathers this point cloud data here. And then it moves to position three and gathers this point cloud data here. So you can see that the point cloud data perfectly aligns with the wall. So here it's inside a rectangular space. And it's going to be perfectly capturing the data. So in the perfect world, the ODOM and map frame is going to be coincident. And it's going to be at the location where the robot started. But in practice, you know, drifting happens. So what we're actually going to be seeing is something like this. Okay, so in practice, we're going to be seeing drifting. So what that means is, you know, you have your map frame and the robot moves to some position, but maybe as it moved there, the orientation kind of got lost. So instead of capturing, instead of having the point cloud map exactly where the wall should be, it's maybe slightly at an angle. And again, it might move to another position, and you can see that it's not perfectly aligned with the wall. And it moves to another position, and you can see it's off again. So this is the cause of drifting. And what ends up happening is that, let's say by the time the robot returns home, the ODOM frame is actually going to be in some position that's no longer accurate. Okay, So it, you can see that it's been drifted away from the map frame, and it's going to be causing some error. So this is why we have SLAM. SLAM is used to correct for these errors and uncertainties. And by using the LiDAR and odometry and computer vision optimization methods, we can more accurately estimate the pose of the robot. So the whole SLAM pipeline, you could think about it as uh, these steps here. So you have sensor data as the input. And then you could think of it as breaking it up into two parts. You have the front end and back end. And the output is going to be your map. Okay, So the front end is going to be things like feature extraction. Um, you have things like the different fast sift, orb, and serve. I have videos on that. You could go ahead and check it out. You have the feature matching part, which I also talked about in some of my open CV videos. And then here you have the determined transform of the camera or the robot, because typically the camera is going to be on top of the robot. And then next up, we have the back end. 
So the back end is the key part is the optimization. So you gather all of these things. So previously for the front end, we're talking about consecutive frames. So between like each segment, something happens. But the back end looks at everything all together and tries to minimize the error of everything. So there's methods like the extended common filter, the particle filters, least squares, the graph uh, post graph optimization. Typically, they like to put it in graphs for um, the data structure because it's more efficient. So once you have that, the idea is you want to break up the map into discrete cells, and the SLAM algorithm could detect determine the probability of the cell you know, being either occupied or empty. So occupied is going to be black, and empty is going to be white. So here's an example of the map that we'll be creating later. And you can see the black spots. Uh, as you can see, black was occupied, right? So black is usually going to be some obstacle. So in this case, our obstacle is our wall. So black is like the estimation of where the wall could be. And all the white spaces is the parts that is just free space, OK? OK, so how do you install the SLAM toolbox? So to install the SLAM toolbox, it's pretty simple. You want to run these two commands, the sudo apt get update and sudo apt install ROS, and your distro plus the SLAM toolbox. Then everything should be up and ready. OK, so now we're going to talk about how to set up the LiDAR for SLAM toolbox. So we will discuss how to add the LiDAR in your Zacro file. So first, we need to add the LiDAR link and transform it so that the LiDAR is in the correct orientation. Otherwise, the object will appear to be on the left when it should be in front. So here is the part you need to add to your Zacro file. We have a link name called LiDAR link. And we're going to be combining the head and LiDAR link together with a join called head to LiDAR link. Okay. And for our rotation, we're going to be adding a pi halves here. And later, we need to add something else for the sensor message. So you want to make sure that the message type is the correct type. And that type is called sensor message. And it's going to be laser scan. So you want to add this part, too, to your Zacro file for your plugin. So previously, we've had this. But the part you need to add is this part. The output type is going to be the sensor message laser scan because the SLAM toolbox is expecting this type specifically. OK, so now we're going to talk about how to set up Gazebo World for the SLAM toolbox. But before SLAM toolbox can work properly in Arvis, we need to make sure that the Gazebo World has objects in it. Otherwise, it won't work. The LiDAR needs to detect objects and pass that data to SLAM toolbox. So here is the part that we want to add inside of our launch file. So this is how you could start up Gazebo. This is how we started up previously. But the main things that we've added is this part here, which is the launch argument. So inside of our launch argument, uh, we have a config. And we've created a world file called uh, walls.world. And another thing that we've added is the use send time is true, which we're adding for everything else inside of our launch file. So that's the main thing we've uh, updated. And to actually see the world, um, it's called, we're going to be going through the steps where we CD, call, and build, and then source, and then run our launch file. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here I've already built it. I'm just going to run it. And this is going to go through the process of everything. So I've already got Arvis set up. We'll go into that later. But here you can see our world. So this is our world that we've set up. And you can see the walls. Okay. OK, so now we're going to talk about how to run SLAM toolbox and set up the parameters. So first, we need a copy of our parameter file, which could be found from the following path here. And then there's a couple of things to note. There's two terms that's being used as online and asynchronous. So online just means it's running in real time. And asynchronous just means that it's going to process the latest data. And then everything's going to be running in parallel, but some of the data might be skipped. And we need to make sure that the parameters in the parameter file, which is called mapper params online async.yaml, is set up correctly. So the main parameters that we're going to be touching are these part, the ODOM frame, which we're calling ODOM, map frame, map uh, base frame, which I'm calling body here, and then our scan topic, which is the default name that the laser LiDAR that we're using, which is LiDAR out. So some applications may require a robot footprint frame, which we're not using. But you could go ahead and look that up if you need it. OK, so a couple of ways of, uh, to run your SLAM toolbox. To run it from the terminal, you go ahead and run this command here, ROS to launch, launch SLAM toolbox, online, async launch.py. And you want to pass in your parameter file. One thing you want to note is it's called SLAM params file. 
and just specify the location of the parameter file and say use sim time is true. And you could do the same thing using it from the launch file using this, uh, these few lines of code here. And then when we start Arvis later, we should be able to see if our SLAM is working properly. OK, so now we're going to talk about how to set up your Arvis settings. So here in uh, the global options, what we want to do is make sure the fixed frame is set to the map frame. And then the next sub, we want to look at the laser scan. So for the laser scan setting, you want to make sure the topic is LiDAR out here. And next up, you see the map. So the map, we have map here for the topic. Make sure that's set correctly. And then we scroll down a little bit. Uh, we have the robot model here. And you want to make sure you have the robot description. And then lastly, we have our transforms, which you could turn on and off as needed. And make sure you set all of these in order, because it's going to matter. Okay. So how do you actually start Arvis from the config file for SLAM Toolbox? So in Arvis, we've went ahead and saved our Arvis file into this path here. And then if you want to run Arvis from the launch file, you could go ahead and add this part to your launch file. OK, so how do you handle the no map received error from SLAM Toolbox? You may see the following error here. No map received and at the transform, it says could not transform from blank to ODOM. So the list of things you want to make sure is that all of these things are happening in order, because uh, especially if you're not using a launch file, then you may do these steps out of sequence. So something, uh, some part of the pipeline might be expecting data and it's not seeing it. So first off, make sure Gazebo is running, and then there's objects in Gazebo. Once you have all that, you can run your Slambox toolbox. So this will actually start up the map topic. And um, later on, when you actually open up Arvis, then you could finally set the fixed frame to map. Map should show up only after the SLAM toolbox is showing. And then the laser scan should only be able to pick up stuff once there's objects in Gazebo. And then finally, you could set up the maps to start visualizing the map. Okay, So hopefully, if you follow all these steps uh, in the right order, you shouldn't see any error that says no map received. OK, so how do you create the map with SLAM Toolbox? So to create the map, we need to drive the robot around. And to do that, we're going to be using the teleop. But before that, you need to make sure that the diff drive controller.yaml file has the use stamp velocity here set to false. So go ahead and update that file. And then now we can run the teleop to move the robot around. Uh, we're going to be using the ROS to run teleop twist keyboard. And then we're going to be using the command velocity called the diff drive base controller command velocity unstamped. OK, so it's only going to work with unstamped, so make sure that you have that set up correctly. So now that we have that set up, we go ahead and open up our terminal. And we're going to have one terminal that's going to run our launch file. And then in our other terminal, we're going to go ahead and run the teleop. So this teleop will let us use our keyboard here. So once I run that, I'm going to pull this over to another window here. And then here, we're going to set up the gazebo and uh, Arvis side by side. So this will allow us to compare it and see what's happening. So now we're just going to go ahead and drive the robot around. So here you can see that initially it's facing like the x direction. So we're just going to rotate this so it's facing in a similar direction. Okay. So now that you can see both uh, both views, we could go ahead and start driving it around. OK, so now that we've finished driving around, you can see that it created a pretty good map. It's pretty square. You can see there's some parts that's not quite perfect. Um, the, over the overall orientation is a little bit rotated, but I would say relative to where the robot is, uh, if you look here, it's actually pretty accurate in terms of the relative location. So if we take a look at the actual frames, we could come here to TF, and we could actually show it. But here you can see that if we zoom in, um, you can see that here is the here is the ODOM frame. So you can see ODOM drifted quite a bit. I think it seems seems to be more sensitive to uh, when you're actually rotating. And then here is the map frame, which was uh, the center of our map. But in terms of the overall map shape and the relative location of the robot relative to the map that's generated. I think it did a pretty good job. You can see that there's some parts here that's uh, not 
not quite good like on the right, but um, I think overall is I think it does the job. Okay, so how do you actually save this map that you want and then reuse it later? So what you want to do is come here to panel and then add new panel. Then here you're going to see the slam toolbox plugin and then you hit OK. And then here, down here, you could actually just uh, write the name of your map. So you could uh, write map as your name, then you could hit the save map and then serialize map. And then once you do that, um, it's going to go ahead and save it to your file uh, folder in your root ROS2. So if we take a look here in our file structure, you're going to see that uh, it should have created these files here called map.data, map.pgm, uh, map.postgraph, and map.yaml. So the main thing to note about these files is that uh, there's different functions. Uh, PGM is a cell occupancy data, the YAML is the grid resolution and origin location, the stuff like that. The map.data is the data from mapping, and the postgraph is for some of the optimization stuff. So for me, I'm going to be putting it into the config folder, uh, but for you, you could put it wherever you want. Okay, so now that we've saved our map, how do you load the map from the SLAM toolbox? So first thing you got to do is update your mapper params online in async.yaml file. So you want to make sure you have these two lines. One is the file path, and then another one is the map start at doc and set to true. And after that, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is rebuild and then run your launch file again. So if we go ahead and run this, you should see that our Arvis will now have the map automatically when we start it up. So I'm going to minimize the gazebo. And you can see here that our map is already up and ready. Okay, So now you could use this for localization with like the nav toolbox and things like that. Okay, So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.